Hammerhead comes with a animated gates feature. And as you can see, if you don't have gates included in your game, that's okay. They're fairly optional. However, the panel will lack the gate switches. So that's just the first thing I wanted to point out really quickly before we add them. So they are purely optional and they won't even appear in the panel if you don't have them added. But to add them, you're going to go to the um, folder for your coaster in Workspace. So right here, it's my folder with everything for this coaster. And if you don't have a model called Gates, you may or may not, depending on when you made your coaster. If it was before the recent update, you probably won't. I'm going to create a model, if I don't have it already, called Gates. And then if I want to add Gates for a certain zone, like for example, this zone right here is my station zone. It's called Station and Everything. I can create a folder within the gates model and name that to the um, zone name. So I'm going to name it station. And here I can put all the gates that I want for my zone. So I'm going to create a part really quickly in here. There it is. And I'm going to group it. And I want this to be an unload gate. You can have load and unload gates. As you can see, they have separate switches. This right here is unload, and this is load. So I'm going to name this unload gate. And next thing you have to do is tell the system how far do you want it to rotate. And so I want my gates to rotate 80 degrees. So I'm going to go to attributes and add a number attribute called angle. Not degrees, like usually for the restraints, but angle. And I'm going to name it, or I'm not going to name it, I'm going to set its value to 80. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this part, and I'm going to put this part, hold on. I'm going to put this part where I want the hinge for the restraint to be. And so let me set its size to something like 0.5 and 0.5. There we go. And so I'm going to want the restraint to, not the restraint, the gate to rotate about this part. So I'm going to name it hinge. And I am going to make it transparent because I don't want, to. actually, you know what? I'm going to leave it visible. You can make it transparent if you want, but I'm going to leave mine visible. Then I'm going to just duplicate it and name this part and turn this into the rest of my gate. So your gates need to have two parts, a model named model and a part named hinge for the model to rotate about. So I'm just going to build a quick little rudimentary gate here. I don't know why it's doing that. What in the world? Oh, it's because I have the model selected. So just a really quick rudimentary gate here. Nothing fancy. And I'm going to select this hinge part because why not? So move it off the ground a little bit. And make that the end of the model. I'm just like, I'm going to put this part back in the model too. So this model right here is what will be rotated and it will be rotated around this part which will be the hinge so first step now is to reset the model's pivot up here actually select your whole gate and make sure it's anchored select your hinge part copy its position to the model's world pivot position sort of like you do with restraints and do the same thing with its orientation So now your model will rotate around this point. And let's try this out. So I'm going to duplicate this and I have this as an unload gate. And I'll make this one a load gate just by naming it load gate. And let's see what happens when I click publish. So Alt P. 
then go and get it tested. So I'm going to set this to manual so I have full control over the gates. I'm going to wait for the train to park. And you can only use the gates when the dispatch button is flashing. So if I click unload, it opens. And if I click load, that one opens. If I leave a gate open when I click dispatch, the system will close the gate automatically. And notice that it's swung 80 degrees outwards. And now I'm going to set it into auto. Wait for this train to park. And when it does, you'll see that the load gate, sorry, the unload gate will be opened immediately. And then after about 10 seconds, I believe, it will close and the load gate will open. So if you have it on automatic, the system will do it for you. And I have a pretty low minimum dispatch time set for my station. And so you'll see that I'll dispatch pretty quickly after that. But if you want it just to be longer, just increase that minimum dispatch time to a longer value and it will hold. So watch. Unload gate opens, rotates 80 degrees. Then it closes and the load gate's open. Waits 5 seconds and if the minimum dispatch time is passed, which it has, it will now dispatch. Unlike restraints, here's the key difference. If I select this rotate, You'll see what I'm talking about. The gates rotate around their y-axis, not the blue, the green. So make sure it's built to rotate around this. So therefore this hinge should be built so that its y-axis is what the side of its rotation is. And that's all there is to gates. Just create a folder for each individual zone. Name unload gates unload gate and load gates load gate and make sure they're set up properly and if you do that all correctly you'll see these buttons appear in the panel in game and you can use these whenever the dispatch button is flashing meaning that the station is active that's all there is to it